Hello everyone, it's Shel C from Paper Octio Studio and today I'm sharing with you canvas number four of the six canvases that I'm making to give away for the 6,000 subscriber giveaway. Uh, when I'm finished with all the canvases toward the end of the month, I will create another video where I show them all and then um, you can leave comments on that one about why you'd like to win one of them and I will be drawing uh, from all the commenters on that video to decide who wins. So look out for that. Um, still have two canvases to go so I'm not complete in the process yet. So I wanted to start out this one by playing with my Marabou art sprays. Um, these are an acrylic spray that dries permanent which makes it very different than all my other sprays because all the other ones if I put water over the top of them they can run and smear. These don't once they're dry. Um, they're permanent because they're in acrylic. So I got these fairly recent, recently. They're not, um, haven't been on the American market more than probably maybe at the most four months probably. Um, I will look them up and leave links below in the description box for you to find them if you'd like to get some. Um, I think they're pretty unique in that it just dries and is not smeary, smeary anymore. So then I used a stencil um, and kind of like made marks with it by laying the stencil on and then removing it. Then I dried all that spray and then now I have the same stencil with, with some white gesso. This stencil, I forgot I owned it because it was hidden in my other studio behind something that had fallen behind something and um, <laughs> I'm finding all these treasures as I move from one room to another with my studio. It's pretty funny. It's like, oh, I forgot I even had that. <laughs> it's pretty, it's pretty fun. It's like a treasure hunt in there. <laughs> so figured I'd use the stencil since I found it. <laughs> it doesn't even look like it's hardly been used. Um, I'm, if I used it, I cleaned it very well. So once the white gesso layer was done, I didn't really think that that was enough. I wanted to add in some more colors. So I got out some yellow green Liquitex Basics uh, paint and went over it again, not completely obliterating the white, but putting some more color in. And I like the way that looked. It's start, starting to look like um, the sunlight coming through the forest and hitting some leaves and vines and things. Um, dappled sunlight, I think it's called. <laughs> so then I decided to add it back in a little bit more dark with this, um, I think it might be fallow green, maybe. Uh, don't know, it's like a, a bluish dark green like you would see maybe in the, the pine leaves. You know, the pine needles, they, they have a very bluish tint to them. So I added that in with my finger, um, not using the stencil. And then just some white splatters over that. And I'm pretty happy with this background. Um, it just, I think I, I think it's starting to be inspired. I think that my color choices were inspired and the, the patterning was inspired by a trip that I just got back from. I went for two days to visit my kid up in Flagstaff. And that's a forested region and there's we we went out and did some hiking and walking around um, looking at some some Indian ruins and things like that like I really love to do we saw elk we saw deer um, very beautiful up there right now everything is so 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 green everything is green and the temperatures are nice it's not too hot not too cold just perfect so um, that was a fun little two-day excursion up there. It's a four hour drive so I can go anytime I want and just visit, you know, miss my kid. So <laughs> I decided that what this piece needed was a deer. Obviously it needed a deer. We got some dappled sunlight coming through the, the forest onto some vines and obviously there was a deer. So I decided to paper paint a deer. Um, this is my process of paper painting. I like to do my drawing on a piece of deli paper, which is a translucent, semi-translucent paper. You could also use tissue paper, but it's not as hardy as deli paper. It tears more easily. So 
um, I make my drawing on that and then I do my paper painting which is a type of collage of gluing lots of little pieces of paper um, to color in your image as if you were painting and making paint strokes very loose paint strokes but instead it's pieces of paper and these papers are a variety of papers I have um, leftover paper where there's been overspray or maybe there's been um, alcohol ink or maybe I used it with my brayer um, there's papers that are printed with a jelly plate there's a lot of those there is deli paper weight text weight and also newsprint weight papers and even a little bit uh, some of them are even a little bit thicker than that but I prefer the lighter weight papers so even when I'm printing with my gelatin plate doing some mono, mono printing sessions I use a lighter weight paper often the deli paper and um, newsprint type paper because I know I'm going to collage with it most likely so I need lighter weight papers when I do make a gel print journal or something like that I will use uh, cardstock or watercolor paper for that <clears throat> excuse me so I'm not sure if this method that I use for paper painting is cheating <laughs> because a lot of people people will glue their paint their paper right onto the canvas and I used to do that but I was so focused on the lines and staying within the lines and and it just became tedious. What I enjoy about this process is thinking about the colors <clears throat> and the textures of the paper. I want to put the colors of papers where the shadows are, the colors of papers where the highlights are. I am really truly thinking about painting as opposed to thinking about the lines and fussing about the sizes and shapes of the paper in order to create the image. Uh, sometimes I do that. I, I'm not saying that I never do that, but this method allows me to think more about where I'm placing the colors of the paper because I know that I can cut this out and I will have my perfect pristine lines that I want around my image once I've cut it apart. So I'm not so concerned about paper going over the edge of the line or whatever. It doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter. So that's the reason that I prefer to do it this way and I think I might be one of the only people that I'm aware of that do it this way <clears throat> so it's just something to think about you know what is your focus when you're paper painting what what do you want it to look like um, so, so many very vari variables if you make the papers if you tear them into smaller pieces you will get a more refined look of color shading and movement um, if you make them larger then it, look, it looks a little bit more painterly um, and abstract looking and if you cut them or punch them you can get something that looks like a mosaic because oftentimes mosaics might have pretty regular shaped pieces in them so you know it's things to think about but ultimately I'm into color I'm into how colors play with each other and I'm into texture those are the things that I enjoy so this is how I prefer to do it it's the shell way to do it <laughs> I'm using Liquitex matte gel medium in case I didn't mention that already I can't remember if I did um, it is more of a paste like glue than a liquid glue so it's good for this type of a work to finish the eyes and the nose I wanted very very specific shapes and so I'm tracing them out onto another piece of paper and I'm going to do them separately I kinda laughed when I first uh, did that when I first drew out the eye shape I realized it looks like what people think the um, aliens look like you know the gray the gray aliens or whatever that's the eye shape <laughs> like kind of um, 
I don't know, almond shaped bulgy eye. <laughs> like this deer's not an alien, I promise. It's it's an actual little deer. I think it's probably a baby deer because I do end up putting some some uh um white dots kind of light, lighter areas on it so that um it has the spots of a fawn. But it does have two little nubby horns, so I guess maybe it's Maybe it's a teenage deer growing out of its babiness and into its, maybe it's transitional deer. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think about that stuff until I'm looking at it as I'm doing these, these voiceovers. And then I'm like, well, maybe it's, maybe baby deers don't have little nubby beginnings of antlers. I don't know. I get, yeah. These are the things that happen when I'm doing my voiceover. When I'm doing the art. Doesn't even it doesn't even occur to me that the, maybe I shouldn't have put those little nubby horns on there. <laughs> whatever, <laughs> just whatever. So I cut out the main portion of the deer and glued it down with my Liquitex gel matte medium, and then I cut out the eyes and nose separately and glue those on. And that works very well for the lines being where they need to be, where I need them to be. Because I'm kind of an, you know, I tend to obsess about kind of an illustrative sort of art. I like black lines around things. I like things to be neat. So that's another reason for me to do my cutting out sort of a, a method. So then I dry this up real good and start kind of adding in a little bit of stuff. I decide that I want more lighter color around the eyes. I did put the Titan buff around the eyes, but it wasn't quite as light as I needed it to be. So I added in some more highlight using a big brush pit pin um, in the white. That's a, a pin that has India ink in it. So it's kind of, it's like kind of like a marker, but it's a got India ink, which is permanent when it's dry and so that's a really great thing to use for mixed media then I use my Stabilo all pencil which is a highly water reactive pencil and draw all around the image and blend that using my brush my um, it's an aqua brush it has water in the barrel that's what it is <laughs> I like to blend it out with that so that it gives a real diffused line not a real perfect line this this um, helps my focal image stand out from the background but also helps it look as if it's not just something that's been stuck on there like a sticker or whatever it, it integrates it into the background as well so that step has a dual purpose and I just go back and forth adding in some more bits of white here and there adding in some black here and there and then eventually I do get out the um, pit artist marker set that I have which they're not the big ones they're the smaller ones but they're the same type of an ink that this is and I use a flesh tone a tan and a darker brown um, <clears throat> to add more definition oh this is where I'm putting in some highlights into the eyes to make them look more uh, reflective you know that they're very the deer's eyes are very reflective so I needed more variety and also to add in the little eyelashes and things that they have they have long eyelashes highlights shadows da 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 back and forth <laughs> and I know that I say a lot of this stuff over and over but you guys have to remember the ones that, of you that watch my videos all the time is that there's more new people coming every day and they might not have seen these videos and they might not know these methods so I need to repeat myself <laughs> at least I feel like I'm repeating myself a lot but it is to teach the people who maybe haven't seen these methods before and maybe the, if you have seen it before you will still hear something that you didn't hear the last time you watched. 
So I just have to say things over and over again. So I did add in those little spots. So definitely a fawn, baby deer of some sort, but might be a teenager, might be a preteen, maybe, you know, the equivalent of a 12 year old or something. I'm just not sure. <laughs> So the reason that I use these markers when I'm doing mixed media is because they are India ink and they dry permanently. So I never know when I'm going to put another layer over something that's that's wet and I don't want to wash away the color that I've put on with another wet layer. So pretty happy with the deer now, but now over on the left hand side there needs to be something. So I go look up quotes and sayings about the forest and about deer and about that stuff and I find this thing that um, really really speaks to me as to how I feel about the forest and the nature and so I decided to add that to my canvas <clears throat> printed out on my inkjet printer a lot of people ask me do you have a laser printer no I don't I do use an inkjet printer um, so there is always a possibility of this ink smearing as I put the little pieces on. Just keep in mind not to keep going over and over and over it with your brush. Just give it a couple swipes and call it good. And if it's a little bit smeary, I don't really care. I'm going to be putting some smeary blacker lines around it anyway with my Stabila pencil. So um, not all that concerned about it. I, you know, it's it. The nature of mixed media is almost messy in some cases sort of messy I don't know so there's the Stabila pencil again and I'm gonna blend it with my water brush and it if there ever was any smears it would make it look as if it was intentional once you put the lines around it and the shadows around it that helps to blend the paper in to the background so it doesn't look like a sticker and also gives it shadows and dimension helps it stand out from the background a bit so then while I was drawing that I still thought it needed something um, wasn't sure what and I decided to use my white Posca pen and doodle around um, the leaf shapes that were still in the background love this step I love how it came about and <laughs> um, the effect that it has on the finished piece I like it I it's another one that I wished I could keep I will make a scan and I will keep a scan of it and I'll send it away to someone but I really like how it came out with the the white um, leafy viney things in the background I did however think that the Posca pen wasn't quite opaque enough and so I use my uh, fine liner bottle which has deco arts titanium white fluid um, acrylic in it with just a tiny bit of water it's very opaque so I go over the lines with that it's a uh, 20 gauge needle not that easy to control in comparison to the pen so it's a little bit messier but it has a bit of a sheen to it a bit of texture to it and it's it's brighter and more opaque so I like the way it turned out better than uh, just the Posca pen in this case love it I think it's cool I do add some more dots and things around and um, with the fine liner in a bit might not be on here but anyway be sure to give me a thumbs up leave a comment so I know you're here subscribe if you haven't already and turn on the notification bell um, my final thing to do was to use this Mod Podge um, dimensional stuff that makes it very shiny on the eyes and the nose, and I think that that turns out pretty perfectly. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>